psychiatric disturbance for a long time. She experienced severe fears and frequent depressions. Mood changes were abrupt and unpredictable. In our investigation, they state, we have learned that Miss Monroe had often expressed wishes to give up, to withdraw, and even to die. On more than one occasion in the past, when disappointed and depressed, she had made a suicide attempt using sedative drugs. On these occasions, she had called for help and had been rescued. From the information collected about the events of the evening of August the 4th, it is our opinion that the same pattern was repeated except for the rescue. On the basis of all the information obtained, it is our opinion that the case is a probable suicide. Dr. Kirby, do you have any idea whether she was trying to telephone for help? It's worse. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I must be frank to state that in seeking in my own mind any justification for this conference, the most impelling reason that occurred to me is the importance of recognizing that in the death of Marilyn Monroe, she has unwittingly and unfortunately played the greatest role of her career in focusing the attention of every one of us living on the gravity of a worldwide problem that pathetically cries out for a solution. A conference of this kind, I hope, will bring to the attention of the public not only the seriousness of the problem, but equally importantly what is now being done in Los Angeles County and other parts of the country in attempting to help those who contemplate self-destruction. It will also show the efforts that are being made in a medical legal office to ensure the accuracy of certifying those deaths where suicide is in question keeping in mind the emotional, social, and economic implications contingent on such certification. Now that the final toxicological report and that of the psychiatric consultants have been received and considered, it is my conclusion that the death of Marilyn Monroe was caused by a self-administered overdose of sedative drugs and that the mode of death is probable suicide. The final toxicological report reveals that the barbiturate, previously reported as a lethal dose, has been positively identified as nembutal by the toxicologist. In the course of completing his routine examination, the toxicologist, Mr. Raymond Abernethy, discovered, in addition to the nembutal present, a large dose of chloral hydrate. Following is the summary report by the following points are the most important and relevant symptoms of disorganization, sleep disturbance was prominent, for which she had been taking sedative drugs for many years. She was thus familiar with and experienced in the use of sedative drugs and well aware of their dangers. Recently, one of the main objectives of her psychiatric treatment had been the reduction of her intake of drugs. This has been partially successful during the last two months. She was reported to be following doctor's orders in her use of the drugs and the amount of drugs found in her home at the time of her death was not unusual. Similar information collected in other cases in the past to recommend a certification for such deaths as probable suicide. Additional clues for suicide provided by the physical evidence are one, the high level of barbiturates and chloral hydrate in the blood, which with other evidence from the autopsy indicates the probable ingestion of a large amount of the drugs within a short period of time. Two, the completely empty bottle of Nembutal, the prescription for which was filled the day before the ingestion of the drugs. And three, the locked door, which was unusual. Whether someone was trying to telephone her on the night that... Uh, I personally have no idea on that score. Did the investigation give any clue to this? One of the gentlemen here might be able to answer your question. Dr. Farbaro? There is no way, of course, of knowing whether or not she was calling out or whether a call was coming in. 
in our investigation, we've had we've come across no one who has uh, uh, indicated that they were attempting to make a call to her at that time. We feel that this was instead much more likely to be a repetition of the previous pattern in which she had taken overdoses and had telephoned someone to help her or uh, what we would call to rescue her and that this had simply not occurred, the rescue had not occurred for this unfortunate time. The gentleman was Miss Monroe, mentally unbalanced. That's the kind of person want to ask that? Uh, I'll answer that. Uh, she was uh, psychiatrically disturbed. She was, uh, uh, be, I would uh, feel that the question is uh, improperly stated to say that she was mentally un unbalanced. I'd rather put it, she was psychiatrically disturbed. Dr. Kirby, what effect will this ruling, what legal effect will it have on the life insurance policies of the state of Ms. Monroe? I have no idea. And that is not our prime concern. Excuse me, Are any of these gentlemen analysts as well as psychiatrists? Will you gentlemen answer for yourselves? I am. Are you a gentleman no, I am a psychologist by profession. You're not a, are you an MD as well? No, no. I am a PhD. Does anybody talk to a Miss Monroe's analyst? I would like to say, at this point particularly, that we know about yeah. Gentlemen, when you please address the man to whom you uh, address the question. Are you speaking to me, sir, or to yes. Dr. Farber or Dr. Lippmann? Yes. According to our information, there was no specific incident or event which was markedly different from other types of incidents which have occurred previously in Ms. Monroe's life to have triggered this particular uh, event. Dr. Kirby, what is the nature of that oral hydrogen? Well, it's described as a sedative. Therapeutically described as a, a, a prescribed as a sedative. Is that prescribed for her? Do these findings... Unusual for a uh, person with a history like Marilyn Monroe's to be able to get a prescription uh, for a drug like Nembutal and the volume she got it? I don't think it's unusual, sir, no. Would you think that it uh, is worthy of um, action by authorities to prevent... Uh, I'm a... Prescription of large I am drugs. Not, uh, concerned with those problems. I don't think it'd be fair for me to answer that question. You probably know the answer yourself, or not. Maybe Dr. Farber no. has yes. a reference on to that. her previous suicide attempt. Uh, could you tell us when, the location, and how long ago prior to her death? Now, gentlemen, may I just uh, make the statement? That's the old automatic <laughs> The well, $64,000 question. Uh, you, you raise an... It, oh. I wanted to know if there's any shadow of possibility that she might have taken the drug to the drug state. Is there any history of this sort of thing happening? You're... Uh, I would like to answer that question. Uh, but uh, you raise... You raise a... Uh, extremely complicated question in a, in a uh, very simple way. Um, that... There is no, uh, at least in 1960, when I went through the medical lit literature on this very subject, uh, because we were encountering this problem in uh, consulting for Dr. Kerfee back then, there was no case on the medic in the medical records where it could be authenticated that someone had died of barbitur barbiturate poisoning under the circumstances that you suggest. That is, that they had become so drugged that they didn't know what they were doing and they took a lethal dose. Dr. Farberall, uh, uh, the answer to this question must be on the public record in various cities and halls. So I don't ask you, according to your uh, report here, you say that on more than one occasion in the past, when disappointed and depressed, she had made a suicide attempt using sedative drugs. Where, how many times, sir? May I refer again to the, my previous statement? I have no comment on the source or uh, the details of this uh, information. Dr. Barbaro, can you tell us the information that she was addicted to sedatives or barbiturates?
Turn the light on there. Your definition of what you call addicted. Among um, uh, among addicts, she 